think I might play a fighter. That works. Idea. <coughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so so yeah, Tini, you wanna you want the f the fighter? Okay. Uh, yeah, I th yeah, I think I'll be a rando fallen bridge. Okay. And Daniel and Lefteris? Yep. Uh, I'm between the wizard and the rogue, basically. Whichever you guys you want. I'm looking at him, uh, Rogath, Evermead, and... I don't know which one you should use. I'm trying to figure out where the cantrips and all that stuff are for me to look at. So you basically have two character sheets. One of them is the usual roll 20 character sheet and the other one is uh, uh, attached uh, at the handout mm -hmm. section there. So you, there's an image there or I think I've linked my drive account so you can actually download the you PDFs. Did. Yeah, so you can actually download the PDFs yeah. and, and everything is in there. <coughs> mm. yeah. Alright, I'll try to find it. I'm just trying to see the spell book because all it's telling me is how many spells I have, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah, the, the PDF character sheet have a section there that uh, tells you exactly what spells you have. Yeah. Okay, so that's on the handouts section? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to character sheets, the last one on the bottom, oh, okay, it'll okay, open another it. window to the drive. Is anyone else getting oh, an okay. echo? Um, I had an echo earlier. Um, you have to, if you're in the game, you might need to um, uh, uh, deafen somebody. Okay. Or if you might you, be getting it from two sources. Yeah. Or if you're not using a headset. Oh, okay. It, it, I had someone was talking in the game. Was it me? Funny window. Yeah. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I turned it off now. It's okay. I turned the mic off on uh, a D20. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we have the, a teeny playing uh, Rando. Uh, Daniel, what, what did you choose? Um, I had chosen uh, Rogath Evermead. The... Or Rogath. Yep. <coughs> so the, the hmm. Dwarven Cleric. Yes. Okay. And Lefteris? I think I'll probably go with the rogue. Quarrel Tangle Strand. Okay. Huh. Oh, oh, no. Hm. The Halfling Rogue. Okay. Um, huh. Great. Uh, so just for the record, can you each say uh, what's your name and if you want to say <coughs> that, where you're from and how many experience do you have with the Dungeons and Dragons? So, um, my name's Daniel. I am from uh, Tennessee, and I'm, uh, my experience of Dungeons and Dragons is I've watched it a lot on Twitch and started jumping right into dungeon mastering about a week or two ago with. That involved a lot of learning, a lot of YouTube videos, and a bunch of stuff like that. So, yeah, just trying to actually play it so I know how to dungeon master it better. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, Hello. Tini? Oh, me? Um, I'm Tini. <coughs> I'll be playing Arondo all on. Yeah, Ar can I start over? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I'm Tinny. I'll be playing Arondo Fallen Bridge, the human fighter. Uh, this will be my first time actually playing d and I've read about it. Okay, great. Um, and what about you, Lefteris? Hi, I'm, my name's Lefteris. I'm uh, originally from Greece, but I live in uh, LA now. And uh, I've been playing D&D on and off uh, for about 20 years. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is gonna be a long. I, I used to DM and everything a lot, and I'm gonna be playing uh, Pearl Tangle Strand. Okay. The rule. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, so 
uh, just just to make sure everybody you know uh, are on the same page uh, we'll be uh, playing um, this uh, st starter set adventure called uh, the lost mine of uh, Fandelver and we'll start it over uh, I, I did one session with uh, three players uh, but we are simply going to do it uh, all over again uh, simply because uh, you know uh, part of you are new to this and uh, yeah it should be fun anyway um, and this is how it goes uh, I'm not gonna teach any rules uh, you know right now so we'll simply start playing and you basically you know tell me what you you want your characters to do and if we'll need any rule or you know if you'll need any help figuring out uh, what's written on the character sheets then then we can uh, <coughs> we can you know do it online um, but but the, the very basic thing to remember is that uh, you just need to tell me what you want your characters to do okay this is this is it and maybe I'll ask you to to roll uh, a dice and maybe I won't if you have your dice with you uh, you know physical dice you can roll them and tell me uh, yeah exactly so if you have them yeah you can just roll them and tell me what uh, what you get um, and if not you can use roll 20 to roll I don't mind uh, I'm not looking at roll 20 chat window so uh, um, you'll have to tell me again what what uh, came out using that roll okay Tini uh, do you have uh, your own <coughs> set of dice or are you using roll 20 I have to use roll 20 okay um, you know how to roll dice there uh, you type out the equation you need to there it is yeah so you basically need to um, <coughs> write out a slash and then you know one d four plus whatever. Uh, you can try yeah. some some rolls just to make sure you're. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I just. What do you call it? <clears throat> On the PDF, I have been able to see more information, but I still couldn't find the spell list because it's supposed to look at the rule book to find it. So oh. I'm looking in the rule book right now. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. Um... Uh, can I prepare my spells now? Sure. Or am I, when am I supposed to do that? No, you, you can do it right now. Uh, no problem. Okay. Cleric. Yeah. I remember clerics and wizards gave me particular trouble in terms of the rules section, so I figured I might as well learn that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so you basically uh, have, you know, cantrips, which you can uh, shoot anytime you want, and you have spells that use slots. So. Um, yeah. Okay, so if uh, everybody are ready, we can start. Um, and we, we have roughly two hours. I'm not sure where exactly we will, um, you know, how far can we make it, but uh, we will try to uh, do the best we can. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. So, um,. <coughs> Okay, so, um, okay, one more thing. Uh, you, we can assume that your characters know each other and trust each other and, you know, there's no need of backstabbing here or stealing from one another. Uh, you, have w you have been working together for some time in the city of Neverwinter, um, which is a northern uh, cold city. Um, and we basically start the adventure by... Um, you being hired by a dwarf named Gundern Rockseeker. Um, he has been uh, your employer for some time, you know, in Neverwinter, uh, and he recently hired you to um, transport a wagon uh, full of mining equipment from Neverwinter to uh, a small town called Fandalin. Um, so you basically need to uh, go south on uh, the trade road from Neverwinter to the southern uh, region of uh, of the you know of Faerun, um, and then um, move east to um, a trail called the Tribor Trail, and from there you can uh, reach Vandalin. Um, 
So the thing is that uh, the dwarf uh, Gundan was very, very excited. He just found something big. Uh, he wouldn't tell you what it is, uh, but he just, you know, he was very excited and he, you know, bought the wagon, equipped it, told you that he will bring each of you 10 gold pieces by, you know, for just transporting it from Neverwinter to Fandalin. And he set out uh, ahead of you with one warrior, uh, an elderly human named uh, Sildur. And both of them took horses and rode south. And the dwarf, Gundan, he told you that he will meet you at Fandalin once you get to the wagon there. This is it. Um, and so on a, um, on a, you know, just a regular morning, uh, you left Neverwinter <coughs> and started moving south uh, on the trade road um, heading toward Fandalin. Now, what I want you to do right now is uh, think um, like we are in a movie and there's a camera going from, you know, from Lefteri's character to Daniel's character to Tini's character. And I want each of you to describe what we see through that camera. You can describe your character, what it wears, how it looks like, whatever you want. Okay, so let's start with uh, Lefteris. Okay. So, uh, camera rolls up from the sky, comes all the way down, and uh, onto the carriage, the actual carriage, where uh, he's riding next to, uh, well, where, which one is the uh, Rogath, who's actually handling the uh, the carriage and moving it along. Uh, he is uh, quite short for a halfling. Not even tall by their standards either. So he's about chest close to uh, Rogath's chest. Uh, fuzzy, fluff, fuzzy hair going all around, brown, smile on his face all the time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do a couple of accents sometimes. I'm not going to do it on purpose. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's not my fault. Totally okay. <laughs> yeah. Just so you guys know. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, just playing with a couple of coins copper because he's a cheap bastard <laughs> <laughs> okay cool and the, um, the camera I... moves to uh, to the dwarves next to you uh, yes where are you sitting again on the um, uh, uh, on your left okay so you and I are both driving it right now is that what you yeah, mean yeah I presume that you're gonna be driving because the fighter is a fighter yeah. And he's going to run to fight, and we're going to hide. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. So I'm uh, my character, sitting next to him. Uh, the rogue halfling next to me is I'm, uh, currently leading on the horses on the front of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the um, uh, wagon. Maybe not doing too well. I think my character would prefer to be out mining or in some cave rather than moving these very large beasts of burden for a dwarf, maybe more accustomed to ponies perhaps, but I'm, uh, he's making do with the um, uh, semi-weird situation that he has been um, uh, plunged into, but he's making the best of it, and I'm, uh, of course, I'm, uh, Coral Tango Stred's smile is obviously setting the mood for this journey right now. Awesome. Um, Tini, the camera moves to your character. What do we see? So, <clears throat> all right. So, what what should I describe? Do I describe do I describe the character or the surrounding area? No, you can describe uh, how you your character looks. Uh, if it wears anything special, if it uh, if he's doing anything special during the ride, that's it. All right. So. Following the carriage is Arlando Arando Fallen Bridge. He's a human. 
he he has an air of nobility around him. He's wearing chainmail, holding a great axe that he clearly treasures quite quite a bit. It's very clean, very recently polished. Awesome, great. Um, and so basically, you've spent the last few days following the the high road uh, south from Neverwinter, and you've just recently veered east. Uh, along the Tribor Trail. Um, you've encountered no trouble so far, but this ter territory can be dangerous, and, and you know this. You know that bandits and outlaws uh, have been known to lurk um, in this trail. Um, and on the Tribor Trail, you've been driving it for, I don't know, half a day. And as you come across a bend in the road, uh, you spot two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet from where you are right now and they are blocking the path so you can see the the, the bend in the road and two dead horses on the floor um, the thing is that uh, the woods press close to the to the trail here um, so basically the bushes and and the trees kind of you know close the road and while it's a well traversed uh, road and wagons and horses probably uh, pass through here it's not a very uh, popular road so uh, the trees are kind of close um, and close on the road on either side um, what do you do um, my I've stopped the horses of course because the road is being blocked um, and uh, I ask uh, Quirrell since you are a rogue would you like to try to stealth ahead and check it out So all you can hear are the birds singing, the, the horses kind of, you know, and, and put their palms on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so... I, I, I want to make a perception check and see what's going on. Okay, go for it. For the starters, because this is bullshit. Pardon my <laughs> friends. Yeah, this is not good. Yep. Uh, can I assist him in the um, uh, perception check? Yeah, go for it. Alright. Where's my That character? was a six. Okay, six from uh, Quarrel and Ruga. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so uh, you both on the wagon, you pull off the horses and you look around. Um, so, you know, other than the buzzing of, of flies and, and birds and, uh, you know, the regular sounds of, of the wild, you don't see anything special. All, all you can see is basically the, the bent in the road, two huge uh, bushes um, or, you know, they're young trees and the dead horses below. Um, Rugath, you do notice something sparkling on one of the trees, uh, you know, it, in the foliage, but as soon as you spot it, it, it vanishes. So you're not sure that you actually saw something. Hmm. I thought I saw something in the bushes. Uh, do you think we should check it out, um, uh, Coral? Well, okay. How how far? Like it's really, really in front of the road, so we need to move stuff in order for us to pass, anyways. So the uh, dead horses, uh, they currently block the road. So if you want to move, you have either to, you know, move the horses or try and, you know, take the wagon outside of the trail, which might be hard. Yeah, that never works. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. <clears throat> yeah, I've, see, I've seen the movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it never works. So, yeah, we're going to have to move the horses. <clears throat> uh Oh. And the dead things. Yeah. Who, uh, Timmy, Tinny, uh, would you like to yes. go up with me? Anima, try to move the horses out of the trail? All right. <coughs> so well, I'm going to examine the corpses, which basically okay. means loot. So, so we all move <laughs> forward. Okay, so the three of you, you, you park the wagon and you uh, approach the, the dead horses. Um, Tie the horse, the wagon, and the horses to a nearby tree or something, too. So mm -hmm. I don't want to chase after it. Yeah, done. No problem. Um, so 
Quarrel, the first thing that you notice as you are searching for some loot is that the saddlebags have been looted. Uh, there's nothing in them. And you also find an empty leather map case uh, thrown on the road, and that triggers a memory. Um, you think you saw Gundern, your employer, uh, fucking uh, such a scroll case into his shirt. And upon second inspection, you think that those saddlebags and the dead horses actually belong to uh, Gundern and his human companion. Um, so you, well, yeah, go. Yeah, I take the case just so you know. The okay. case is coming with me. Sure. And as you kind of, uh, you know, looking down and and uh, examining the the uh, the saddlebags and the leather um, map case, um, uh, Erando and uh, Rugath, you two. Um, basically take three steps and then Rugath you notice um, from the two bushes that you know um, hang above the the road you can see small uh, arrowheads uh, and they are pointing at your <coughs> friend uh, quarrel and now that you're close uh, closer to the dead bo to the uh, uh, dead horses you can actually see um, the shafts of arrows that stick from the horses okay um, and you think that there's something on the trees pointing a bow at your friend quarrel what do you do now um being <clears throat> overly cautious and a bit jumpy uh, can i cast sacred flame into that bush oh yes you can uh, and uh, when you do that, I need you all to roll for uh, initiative. So that's basically a d20 plus your uh, dexterity modifier. Okay. Nine. Actually, hang on. Yeah, nine. Okay. Nineteen. Oh, that's cool. Uh, g give me a moment. The roll 20 window's <laughs> acting up a bit. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> uh, six. Six. Okay. Um, so. I uh, think you rolled a D eight on that one. Yeah, I just looked it up. Uh, it says roll a one D eight. The target gains no benefit from cover. Uh, for this saving throw. Oh, you're talking about the sacred flame. Oh, you did the yeah. sacred flame. Yeah, okay. the cantrip. Okay, so what happens oh, is oh, this. Wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, I think I may have messed up. Give me a moment. Yeah. The six was from when I was testing out the rolls. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, that's fine. So, so roll again and tell me uh, your result. <clears throat> okay, 13. 13? Nice. Yep. The okay, cool. The one before was from a D8. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, this is what happens. Um, Rugas sees the, the arrow shafts coming out of the bushes and pointing at Quarrel and start casting his uh, spell. Uh, Quarrel, you are so speedy that immediately as you notice your friend is casting a spell, you look up and you watch from beneath, from inside the foliage two goblins they are, you know, lurking in the bushes and pointing their uh, bows at you. Uh, and since uh, you have nighting on your uh, initiative roll, you get to act first. And after that, um, Rugath spell. Oh, sorry. After that, uh, Teeny. Okay. So your spell, Rugath will uh, kick uh, last. So Quarrel, what yep. do you do? I hide. Okay. Um, so think about I mean, it this the way. The horses are large, right? Yeah, but think about it this way. Uh, both goblins basically aim at you, so they can actually see you right now. Trying to I hide. Know, but I uh, wait, 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 wait. naturally stealthy. You can attempt to hide when you are obscured by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Okay, let's do this. That would be both of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So roll. Actually, and... it's pretty much anyone. Okay. <laughs> Halflings. Yeah. So you yeah. want to describe what are you doing exactly to hide? 
Well, basically, I'm at the ho uh, I'm at the horses, right? Yeah. So I mean, the horse is pretty large for me. So I'm basically ducking next to the horse. It stinks, I know, but <laughs> there's not much I can do right now over okay. there. I'm gonna attempt to hide. Okay, do that. Can I do that as a bonus section. Check something. Okay, and in the meantime, Tini, you can think what you want to do after uh, uh, Quarrel's turn will be over. Classes. Um, I have a question involving clerics. When you use a spell, is there a certain modifier that you are supposed to add on top of it, and or does it always specify if you should add it in the book? Um, so if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it specifies um, if it's an attack spell, if you need to roll a dice, then there's your proficiency modifier or your uh, spell casting ability that you uh, might be adding. Okay, uh, yeah, I need to try to find that. Yeah, but I think Sacred <coughs> Flame is... Uh, I mean, the goblins Capture. need to do a... Yeah, the goblins need to do a, a save. So. Yeah, they need to do a dex saving throw. Right. I'm just trying to figure out what to add on top of the D8. Oh, nothing. If there is. No, nothing. Nothing, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Quarrel. 17. 17. Okay, so you roll and thuck, you, thuck yourself um, someplace, you know, beneath one of the foots maybe or one of the saddlebags uh, and you kind of make yourself a tiny ball to avoid being noticed. What now? Uh, now I will take my short bow out and I'm going to try and see if... That if I can see them, I can. Can I see what? Yeah, yeah, you can see. Me? Yes, you can see, and you can shoot them. Uh, it's kind of hard, uh, you know, between the leaves, but you can definitely have uh, have a go. So do it. Shoot. Okay. <clears throat> well, they know I'm there, so I don't get any advantages. Right. Oh wait, yeah, they have to roll. Yeah. So. Uh, you have the advantage. Uh, they, they, you manage to uh, hide between the the horses, the, the corpses. So you get disadvantage, and okay. an advantage. Yeah, sorry. It's a yeah. normal roll. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So I don't get advantage, basically. Five, uh, 16. 16. So the arrow pierces the foliage and you can hear a thump as it uh, uh, sticks into the chest of one of the goblins. Damage? Seven. Seven. He clutches his uh, chest and falls <laughs> over. Uh, and you can hear the oh, as it falls right next to you. Uh, so Rugath and uh, Orlando, you can, you can actually see one goblin drops from the bush. Uh, with you know, uh, with uh, quarrels, with quarrels arrow uh, sticking from his chest, uh, that was a good shot. Um, yeah, Rando, what do you want to do? Uh, Tini, that's you. How far, uh, how far away are the goblins? Um, so, something like fifteen feet. You've basically approached to the to the horses. Uh, and so they are basically above your head, uh, or at least one of them, uh, inside the tree, a young tree. Would I be able to cut down said tree? Oh, you, you can definitely try to cut down the branch on which the goblin sits, yeah. All right, can I do that? Yeah, sure. What, make, what, what, do, I, what make, do I have to roll for? Make an attack roll. All right, uh, which dice is that? That's a d20, and you need to add your strength and your uh, proficiency modifier, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, should be around plus five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so plus you five strength. Okay, great. And what's the what's the proficiency modifier? Oh, it's plus two. How does the proficiency modifier work exactly? So you basically add it to any attack roll or skill check uh, 
um, or you know if you're using a tool uh, that you're proficient mm -hmm. with uh, almost anything almost anything oh and you see proficient okay i see all right all right so that would be a plus seven plus five total you oh snap so it should... Do any of you have the, Do any of you have the roll twenty window up right now? That's a natural oh. twenty. A guys. natural twenty. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's that's twenty-five, but the, <laughs> more than enough. So, uh, do you want to describe what 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 is happening right now, as as you you know run with your axe? Oh, Arando rushes towards the branch, mighty axe in his hand, and he. He just cracks that branch off the tree. Okay, so you far you... more force than probably necessary. <laughs> so you see, you know, branches and leaves flying everywhere, and you can see uh, one skinny goblin. He kind of shuts what, and then splap. He, he you know splats heads face uh, head first on the on the for on the floor uh, next to the to the horses uh, uh, dead bodies, and then he sits. And you can see his eyes kind of go uh, across as he, you know, trying to recover from from his fall. And soon after, he kind of pops his heads up, uh, hands up, and says, oh, yeah, "Enough, enough! Don't, don't hurt! Don't, enough!" In common? Uh, broken common, but yes. Okay. <clears throat> Do we capture? Do you want to capture him? Yeah, we probably should interrogate him. Yeah, I agree. Uh, is it my turn to go? Um, so basically, we're out of combat unless you want to attack or something like that. So. Mm, I'd like to try and tackle him, and I'm gonna tie him uh, up if that's okay. If that's a, do I have any rope? Uh. So you don't have to roll anything for that. He's he's basically surrendered. So he's you know hands mm -hmm. up and he lets you do whatever you want with him. If you want to time, you time. Yeah, I probably I like the time. You guys, my what do you call? It? We can bring him with us, perhaps use him as a shield or, or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. Oh no no! Don't worry don't worry. We're all terrible people. And the the goblin <laughs> the goblin looks at uh, Erando. Uh, Please don't, don't, uh, men with big axe, uh, uh, stay foul, stay foul. <laughs> um, <clears throat> where did the, uh, where did you take, um, uh, the riders of these two horses? Um, and, uh, he looks at you and says, uh, uh, big chief told us to take them to cave. Where is this cave? I don't know, and you can see him kind of. <laughs> really? Tell us where the tell us where the cave is, because if you think you're afraid of his war axe, you should be very afraid of my war hammer. Okay, so I need you to roll an intimidation uh, check. And I'll roll an insight. Okay, do that. Yeah. And um, I suck at all this. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, nine. Perfection. Okay, so well, um, he says, um, Chief Clark will, will bash you on the head. Uh, you don't want to go to his cave. And he points uh, basically, you know, kind of to the, to the north. And he points and says, you don't want to go to his cave. He'll bash you in the head. Is there any more information you guys want to try to get from him? Uh, pretty much everything. Hmm. What do you? What do you, you? You can you know talk to him. Or... I'm out of questions. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really have any more. Are there any other goblins that follow you here? Uh, he says no. Uh, just the the two of us, two of us, and we stay here, and we watch that dwarf comes. If dwarf comes, we bash him on the head and take him to. To the cave. This is what. Chief says, Chief Clark. And I'm not telling you anything. Okay, hmm. we believe you. You're not telling us anything. <laughs> okay. Do I? So yeah. you will not tell us that two goblins actually managed to capture 
a seasoned warrior and our dwarf friend. A seasoned? He was not tasty. We didn't eat him yet. We didn't put season <laughs> in him. But it was easy. Dwarf, we just bash in the head. It's easy. Hmm. So you did not get them? Uh, me? Not not me. But uh, it was a chief clerk, yes? He bash on the head and take them to cave. Because uh, the black spider told him, uh, but I'm not telling you anything. No, 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 no. I know you're not telling us anything, but who's the black spider? Uh, uh, um, I, I don't you tell know. tell me who he's not. He's not uh, the one who pays Chief Clark to take Dwarf. No, he's not. Okay, so he's not the guy who pays Chief Clark. Okay, that works too. But uh, you, you have lots of questions. Maybe I take you to Chief Clark. You ask him all the questions. He'll tell you anything after he bash you on the head. Oh, no, no. He doesn't have to bash me on the head. My head is kind of sensitive. <laughs> So you, uh, so you, um, you let me go, yes? I go. <laughs> Not yet. That's funny. That's Sweet. funny. Uh, yes, they, they keep telling me that, that I'm funny, but, uh, yes. So, um, <laughs> um, by the way, my yeah. name is Duke. Duke. Hmm. Don't really care right about now. We could have him try to lead the way to the cave. I could take yeah. you to hideout, uh, uh, but then you need to pay me, yes? You pay the guide. How hmm. much money do we have? I have ten gold pieces. I have none. <clears throat> do we have enough to pay this goblin? Or, Most likely. Or am I going to have to start intimidating him? No, no, wait, wait. Might want to try on, that. Hold on, hold on. He's still tied up, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna huddle a little bit further away. Hmm. Oh. We don't have to pay him. Him prisoner. I know. <laughs> we could just have him lead us there, and you could, I don't know, accidentally let go of an arrow, perhaps. Why an arrow? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you want to be more savage than that, that's totally up to you. <laughs> it's not about savagery. It's about artistry here. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a there's a there's a finesse. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. And we're out. Let's try that again. Uh. I think it's all dropped. Yep, I, I dropped, but I'm back, yes. Welcome back. Wait, oh, Whew. okay, and we're back. Yes. Take two, action. <laughs> there is a finesse to it. <laughs> yes, there is. Um, there is always a finesse to everything that I do. I say we say we're going to pay him, and when we see the cave or something like that, we could dispose of him or perhaps offer to pay him even more money to perhaps I'll be distract right any back. guards or anything like that. Okay. This, uh, I agree with this plan. Okay, oh. yeah. I'm good with it. As long as we don't give him any money. Well, yeah. Anything. He's probably got money on him. So We're not paying him. <laughs> so uh, That's what, we what was the decision? Um, we are going to offer him five gold pieces to take <gasps> us to the cave. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, and we may perhaps give him a raise depending on what we see at the edge of the cave. Okay, so he's, he's basically sitting there, you know, looking at the skies, hands behind his back, tied up. What do you say? So... We are prepared to offer you five gold pieces. And his jaw, us. his jaw drops. Five, five, five. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now we're going to keep your arms tied behind your back, um, but you will take us to this cave. Yes. Uh, for... and, and you're gonna tell us how many, 
how many people there aren't in that cave. Oh yes, uh, for for five uh, uh, gold, I will tell you the traps that they put before the entrance to the to the height to the cave. Yes. Oh, that works too. Ooh. So come, come, and he he uh, jumps up, hands behind his back, and kind of you know wobbles back to the road, and he basically tries to go north. So he cuts the rope, and he says, uh, "You come, I I lead. You come." Mm. Uh, well, we should, guys, we should, what are we going to do with that? And I just oh. point at the carriage. Is there a place for us to um, uh, tie it up and have it be somewhat hidden? Yeah, perhaps? You, yeah, sure. You can, you can, you know, camouflage it or tie it to uh, to one of the bushes and and you know, make it not visible from the road. No problem. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll do that then. Okay. Um, so you basically. Uh, tie the wagon and put some bushes on it uh, and follow the goblin, follow Duke uh, north and you are basically walking in this uh, you know wide uh, opening you can see the the hills to the north um, and uh, trees here and there and soon the, the road becomes a little bit rough and the goblin leads you um, in this you know snake snaky trail um, uh, besides hills and, and boulders and trees. And after something like uh, half an hour of walking, uh, he points at this um, cave mouth that is located uh, beneath a, a large hill. And he says, uh, you, can, you can continue from there and just make sure to check the floor because they did this big pit. Yes, if you step on it, you fall. So check the, the road and you can go to the cave and tell uh, Chief Clark that Duke sent you. And he, he will bash your head and answer all your questions. Money? Um, uh, first of all, I have one question for him. The, yeah. Are there any um, uh, <clears throat> goblins that we can see um, outside the cave? Are there any guards? So uh, what you can see is this uh, uh, open cave mouth uh, and again bushes that kind of cover it uh, so the visibility is not great into the cave but what you definitely see is a, a stream of water that pours from the cave mouth um, so the, the opening has this uh, stream crossing it and there's a small stone ledge you can actually try to use to climb into the cave so um, can we ask Duke if there are any goblins that are supposed to be guarding the entrance, not like everyone inside there, but are there any specific, I don't know, outer layer defensive guards that, you know, would sound alarms and stuff like that? And that he says, uh, money, you untie me, you give me money, I tell you everything, but not when I'm tight, this is... Oh, no, 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 you tell us first, because yeah. I don't trust you. Yeah. And he, he so thinks... Because you haven't answered that question that I asked you before. What? Oh, you have not not answered the question that I told you before. Oh, no, now you make sense. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are goblins inside. They, they like me. We, we part of the Kregmau tribe, yes? How many aren't there? there? Oh, not more than not more than two. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm two. a bit suspicious of those number numbers. <laughs> yeah. Me too. How I was good. Fingers. Uh, Duke has only four in each arm. You have more. You freak. I know. I know. So. Yes. This many? Yes. Or more than this? No. This this seems right. Inside check. Yes, seventeen. Okay. Um, so his math skills are not uh, brilliant, but you think he's telling the truth. Uh, should be something around that number. Okay. So we're looking about at least eight people. Yeah. I'm thinking, if there are any guards or sentries, specifically sentries that are keeping watch, I was thinking we could offer to pay him more gold, have him lure them 
into a, a trap, perhaps, or we could tell him that we're trying to, that we could use more goblins for employment, and so, we could offer to give him a raise and pay them a very little bit, have them all come out, and we ambush all three of them. So he, he tells you, I, I'm right here, you know? Yeah, right. But there's eh. too many words. I couldn't understand what you're saying. You pay me, I I let you go inside, and I, I go, because... Uh, if Chief Clark uh, finds me, he'll bash me in the head. I don't want it. I want him to bash you in the head. He'll hmm. bash us in the head. Don't worry. Don't worry. He'll try. Uh, how would you like permanent employment? With you? Yeah. This is amazing. I didn't. I. I never thought it. But how? I'm just this tiny goblin. You are mighty adventurers. Yeah, yeah but you've been so great so far. I can do that, but not like this. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, but, you know what? Uh, it's not fair, just you. I mean, how would you like to be the goblin master? And he, his eyes go wide. Goblin master. Yeah. <laughs> yes, what how would do, you like that? What do I need to do? Well, basically, how about you bring out some of your friends and uh, we can employ them too. Of course, they're not going to get paid as much as you because you're the goblin master. That's that's wonderful. Uh, so you untie me, you give me two gold, I go show them and they come. Yes, I, you go, and you, go should... and you bring them out. You don't have to tell them. We'll, tell, we'll explain the details to them. But what you can do, well, well you can do that, right? Now? I can go to them, but if I go with my hands tied, they'll... They... No, 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 we will we'll take the hand, we'll do everything, yes. don't worry. But you'll, you're gonna need to bring them out, some of them at least, whoever... And don't tell them anything, it's gonna be a surprise. I, I, we can do that, yes, sure. So I, mean, I need, I, gonna... I need you to roll yeah. uh, a diplomacy check. Uh, so he looks uh -oh. at you and he's trying to figure out what you're all about um, and he says yes uh, okay uh, but um, you give me uh, two gold and I go and talk to them and bring them here but you make promise that they don't bash Duke in the head who won't who won't do that them yes the the oh, chief they won't don't worry chief, chief won't don't tell the chief <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Don't tell the chief because you're the new chief now. I'm not chief. I'm I'm this small goblin. I think you're trying to trick me. Roll that uh, diplomacy check. Diplomacy Is it persuasion? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen. Well, I think I think the the little man. Uh, I'll do what you say. But first, you untie me. Sure, I untie him. So the, the ropes off, he kind of waves at you and he walks um, at, you know, straight into the, the cave opening. And when he does that, um, he stops and then kind of shakes one of the bushes and screams into it. And you don't hear exactly what he says, but there's obviously an argument there between him and another two goblins that are set as sentries. Um, I'm hiding. And okay, do that. Great. Yeah, I like to roll a stealth check. <laughs> okay. I have disadvantage though because of my armor. Okay, and Tini, what do you want to do? Do you want to hide as well? <laughs> yeah. I yes, roll I'll, a I'll hide. two. I roll a two minus one, so. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, so the, right. yeah, so the dwarf stands in the middle clang, of clang, the... Clang. Yeah, you're, you're standing in the middle of the road with a branch, hiding behind a branch, right? Uh, behind this... <laughs> Push, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hidden. I like it. Um, uh, Lefteris, what was your role? Uh, 16. Okay, you vanish. And uh, Tini? Uh, what's, does this role have a modifier I need to know about? So uh, no. it's basically a d20 plus your dexterity modifier if you have any. And if you're proficient with uh, stealth, uh, you can add that. that your... All right, so, it, so it's a d20 minus one. Okay. And you can hear Duke shouts at his, you know, the other goblins. No, they are, they are told me I bring you out and 
you and they they shout in at him uh, uh, 15 15 okay so uh, uh, Arando you also get off the the you know this goblin trail and and vanish in the in the wild uh, so there's this small argument uh, between the um, the goblins and Duke and eventually they they actually do bash him on the head and stupid stupid King you know, Chieftain Clark told us to, to get all the intruders not to bring him in um, and they slap him and uh, two more goblins along with this Duke uh, they go out of hiding and approach on the trail next to the place where you are hiding and they are holding you know crude swords uh, and uh, bows and they are you know searching in the in the woods uh, so since uh, quarrel and um, and the rondo are hidden uh, unless you want to do something Ruga to uh, make sure the surprise works um, you'll be able to ambush them me no so you just basically you kind of you know trying to find yourself a place to hide but you soon realize that it won't work they'll, they'll spot you so yeah okay so they walk on the <clears> road and then two of the goblins shout a dwarf kill him and then they rush to you uh, and at this point uh quarrel and rondo can uh ambush them you can actually have a free attack uh, do i get advantage on that attack yes you are yes you are okay okay i will take it with my short bow Nine. Nine. This is you have two rolls, why? right? And you can choose. Yeah, the I know. I rolled a one and a four. Okay, so uh, an arrow from Quarrel uh, leaves his bow and just you know flies above the heads of the goblins. Uh, no damage done there. Um, Erando, what do you want to do? You basically have a free attack. Now, uh, Tini, that's um, you. Yeah. All right. So how many are there? Uh, there are three goblins. Duke, one of them. Oh, all right. I'd okay. like to attack these goblins. Okay. From my hiding place. Okay, go for it. Uh, and you basically all have right. to have an advantage on the on the roll. All right. So. What do I roll? <laughs> you roll. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. I'm so new. You roll. Um, <laughs> 1d20 plus 5 and then you do that again and you choose the higher number all right okay because you're hiding uh you get an advantage on the roll you roll twice and you pick the highest number so it works for you all right so first i got a seven and Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, uh, seven and thirteen, so thirteen. And that's after your plus five or before? After. After. Okay. Um, so in this case, uh, let me just make sure. Uh, okay. So I I'm assuming you swinged with your axe, right? Yeah. Okay, so you basically jump out of your hiding place, waving the, the axe around, and all three goblins man manage to duck your attacks. They kind of, you know, spread wide, and oh, he's got a big axe, kill, kill the big fighter first. Uh, and, uh, but, but you don't manage to uh, hit any of them. Um, Rugath, your turn. Um, I'd like to cast the sacred flame cantrip yep. to on the um, uh, closest goblin to me okay uh, so you wave your hands and i'm doing a a, um, a reflex uh, sorry a, a, a dexterity save and i don't make it so you make to um, roll a 1d8 for radiant damage on one of the goblins i rolled a two a two okay um, so one of the goblins kind of catches fire from this column of fire that drops on it uh, from um, from above, but he quickly rolls on the floor to quench the flames while shouting, "A wizard! A wizard!" Um, 
and then the three of them get up and uh, rush at you and Duke screams you try to trick Duke I will I will bash you in the head for that and he uh, lunges for Quarrel while the other two goblins split between uh, Arando and Rugath so Quarrel I need your AC uh, 14 14 so one of the goblins uh, hack you with uh, his uh, crude short sword and uh, deals one point of damage uh, to you. Ow! And uh, <laughs> one of the goblins rushes at Arando. Arando, what is your AC? This is AC? your yeah armor class. Armor class. All right. Seventeen. Seventeen. So he jumps at you with his sword, but you easily block and uh, you know sway his. Um, uh, attack with uh, your axe. There are sparks, you know, uh, flying from your axe and his swords kind of pew, uh, as you two uh, fight. And uh, Ruga, your AC? Uh, 18. 18. So another goblin uh, swings but misses. Your armor blocks the, the, the blow of that goblin. Um, okay. Quarrel. What do you want to do? So you basically are all three, you know, fighting each other at this uh, entrance to the to the cave. I'm gonna stab him with my short sword. Okay. Now notice that. Bastard. Yeah, because you're all fighting uh, close together, um, we can assume that there is an ally, you know, five feet from you and your uh, adversary. So you get an advantage on the roll. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. Uh, twelve. Um, twelve won't do it. Uh, you try to stab him, but the the goblins are wearing this thick leather armor, and you are blocked by, by their armor. Um. Okay, Rugath, what do you want to do? Um, how many goblins Three. are there around us? Three. Three. Duke and two more. Hmm. Has anybody on my uh, what do you call it? Talk. Hang on, that'll be my phone. <laughs> um, I would like to cast Sacred Flame on the uh, uh, Duke. Okay. Hang on. So I will make uh this the dexterity save and I'll fail. Um, okay. So I. Yeah. So I failed the save. Duke tries to jump from the flames, uh, but your column of fire drops straight at him. Roll your dice, d8. I rolled a three. Three, okay. So that's a three. So he screams and uh, flees into the wild. He just turns around and, oh, I'm burning, I'm burning, and just runs uh, straight into the Attack wild. Attack of opportunity. Yeah, go for it. Uh, and Tini, what are you trying to do? No. Nothing. I'd like that missed. Okay. I'd like to try to take another swing at them. Yes, do that. Alright, so 1d20 plus 5, right? Yes. And you can hear the goblin scream Duke, you coward! Get back here! Uh, plus five. It's twenty. Twenty. Okay, so you manage to uh, slash one of the goblins across the chest. Roll your damage, and let's see if you manage to kill him. Uh, damage is a different dice, right? Right. Uh, uh, D twelve. Probably. D twelve. Yep, and you yeah. add your strength modifier to that. Which is probably a plus three. So that's 1d12 plus three. Wait, is it the strength on the sheet? Yeah. Yeah. That's plus five. No, no, it's you have 16. No, not, not the saving throws. The tribute uh, on the top corner. Oh, yeah, that's plus three. Yeah, great. Okay. So 1d12 plus three. What do you get? Sorry, I, I'm very new. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. okay. Nine. Nine. So you managed to Wait, cut. You rolled a d6, dude. Uh, that's d12. It says right there. Oh, d12. Yeah, six plus three. Sorry, my fault. 
Okay, no problem. So that's a nine overall? Yeah. Okay, amazing shot. So you managed to hack uh, one of the goblins to two. Uh, you know, both of the pieces of his body fall on the ground, twitching a little bit, spraying blood, uh, and then nothing. The other goblin looks at this horror scene and drops his weapons and just flees into the wild as well. Uh, leaving only the open mouth cave uh, in front of you. Hmm. What? Killed did... one goblin. Is there anything we can loot from his body? So if you search the, the body, uh, the single body, uh, you find this small... He has a, a, a small belt on him with this leather pouch that obviously he made by himself. It's still smelly from the, you know, the beast he was taken from. You find uh, a small um, pebble, but it's totally red. It's, it's very strange. You've never seen it before. Uh, just one pebble and it's red. Um, so you can, mm. you can pick it up if you want. Yeah, yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to take these. Seems like they might come in handy later. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Um, so I guess we should uh, go into the cave. Try to find them, uh, our um, uh, employers. Yes. Okay. Um, I need See, you. See, entries are gone. Sure. Okay. So I need you to tell me uh, what is the marching order. Uh, the cave is, as I said, as you stand in front of it, you can see that its west side is just a stream uh, going out from the cave uh, and running through. Uh, but on the on the eastern side, there's a small, um, you know, uh, rocky ledge that you can walk. Uh, but it's too narrow for you to go you know uh, you one have at a time yeah you have to to go one at a time so i need you to tell me which one goes first last and in the middle what's everyone's armor class uh mine's 14 you guys are tanks yeah mine's 18 what's yours Ma? 17. i guess i'm in front <laughs> uh, actually i guess I'm in. Oh front. yeah, you should be front. Yeah, because you're uh... trapped. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, so where the trap is, kinda. Sorry. You told us about the pit. Yep. In the towards the entrance. So I'm gonna search for that. Okay. Um. So we have uh, Quarrel first, and then Rugath, and then Arando. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Oh. So, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, I prefer the fighter teeny first and then Rogath because you got the sacred flame from the fire, anyways. Mm -hmm. He needs to get up close and personal. That's fine, yeah, that sounds I okay. can always run between his legs. Okay, so sounds right. one of you is introducing a lot of noise to the stream, maybe a cell phone near the not sure who is it. So, oh, it stopped. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. Um, okay, so uh, just making sure again, Quarrel, you're the first, then Rugath, then Rando? No, Rando and then Rugath. Rando and yeah. then Rugath. Okay. Yeah, so I'm in the back. Okay, so Quarrel, as you, uh, you know, sneak uh, closer into the, the clearing before the, uh, the cave mouth, you indeed identify um this pattern of leaves across the floor um across the ground so this is probably uh, the trap duke uh, referred to and you know with a s several pokes of your you know sword or, or stick or whatever you definitely um locate the the this camouflaged pit so you can guide okay. the other group members just to bypass it okay all right awesome trap so, <clears throat> we uh, go around the pit and continue onward? Yes, yes you do. Um, right. So you find yourself uh, just inside the cave mouth and you can see that um, you know sunlight pours into the cave right now, 
but you can see that uh, deep inside it's pitch black so uh, you'll need to figure out what to do uh, when you reach uh, inside but for now you can actually see the stream and you can see uh, a few uneven stone uh, steps that leads up to a small uh, dank chamber which is you know basically the entrance of the of the cave mouth uh, and uh, Quirrell as you go on this um, stony ledge uh, you go for about you know something like uh, 15 feet or 20 feet and you can see that uh, while the cave continues uh, um, you know inward into the to the uh, hill uh, you can see that there is an opening to the right of you uh, and you can see more stony um, steps that leads into this um, into this chamber or opening uh, but you can hear snarls and chains rattled and barks uh, from that chamber you're not there yet so you can't peek and look what's going on there but you can definitely hear panting and snarls and barking and rattling chains uh, in, in that chamber <coughs> what do you do huh. do I recognize what they might be um, so you can roll um, do a wisdom check unless you have uh, some nature or you know any other related skill I uh, doubt it Nope, none. Okay, so just a wisdom check. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. So you you basically recall that a lot of goblins uh, hang out with wolves as pets. Uh, so you think these are wolves inside this chamber? Um, this is this is what you think. Okay. Guys, guys, stairs this way. Probably wolves. Do we want to go there? Um. Or do we want to just bypass it completely and go forward? We could bypass it and I could take a quick look in it because I have a uh, dark vision, so I'll probably be able to see anything in there with a quick glance. We don't have to fully explore it. Yeah, we can go snow bit. Okay, so you want to take a few okay. steps forward, no problem. Um, so Rugath, you bypass um, a Quarrel and you kind of uh, walk very slowly to that opening. And as soon as your nose, uh, you know, pops up and and uh, just passes the opening, you hear this, uh, you know, jumping. <laughs> Uh, and, and you kind of look to the other side and you can see the mouth of this huge wolf drilling and barking at you and pulling at his metal chain as hard as possible. You are lucky because you can see that they cannot move and enter the, the actual cave uh, entrance. They are stuck around that chamber. You can see this uh, stalagmite, this stone formation and wedges stuck on this stone formation holding chains and you can see three wolves uh, kind of patrolling the chamber one of them is at your face right now at the far end of this room you can see this pile of rubbish um, uh, but other than that the, the room seem to be empty what do you do this this wolf is kind of you know in your face right here but if you if you sidestep you can move along mm -hmm. we should probably just move along not harass them. Okay. Um, okay. So you manage to slowly bypass the, this opening and you uh, progress or, or move along deeper into the cave. Now the cave is very steep. Uh, so you kind of you know climb into the cave and watch as the stream go by. Um, so Think about the stream as it uh, plunges and, and splashes uh, on its way down. So basically the noise from the water drown any other noise from the cave. Um, and okay, so I'm still looking for traps, just so you know. Yep, yep, sure. No, no problem. Um, so, Quarrel, as you look and, and try to look for, uh, for traps, you dimly... Um, you, you identify this t dim shape of uh, a rope bridge hanging something like 70 or 80 feet 
uh, deeper into the cave. Now that area is in darkness. So unless you have dark vision, uh, all nope. you see, okay, so all you see is this dim shape of a bridge hanging above the water. Uh, you can definitely see that the cave is uh, bending toward that bridge. Um, what do you do? <coughs> How deep is the water? Um, so if you try them, it's basically ankle deep and sometimes they go to knee deep, but the, the floor of the stream is very uneven and very dangerous to uh, walk on. So you can do it, but it will take you twice the time to pass the same distance as you would. Um, Okay. So we need this. So we need some. I can. Um, uh, I have dark vision. Um, or should we make some uh, torches or something like that? Yeah. If we light things up here, it's like hello. We're here. Yeah. So I mean, I can go ahead and guide you guys, or we can do. We can make a light. What do you guys want to do? Well, I mean, unless we're already in a fight. I mean, doing the light spell is. I don't think it's worth it as much because I mean they can see us. Actually, they can see us anyway. Well, light, light the can trip. We could. I could just literally pick up a stone, light it up, and give a glowing rock. You know, that doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to do that? I'm just saying that if you if we do that, they'll definitely know we're here. Mm -hmm. If uh... we don't do it immediately, mm -hmm. and kind of stumble a bit. I mean, you can see normally, so you yeah. shouldn't have a problem with that. No, we. Uh, I do we have a rope or anything like that that I that you guys that I can hold on to that you guys can hold on to so I can guide you guys easier. Well, so well, for now we can kind of see, anyways. I mean, at oh, least you guys can see? a bit. Okay. Well, uh, what do you want me to go to the front so I can uh, Maybe. see for you guys? It's still. I mean, I can see uh, an outline still from the bridge and stuff. From what he's, uh, he said, so I mean, I go I'm... up and look at the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you take a few steps, uh, and again uh, bypassing um, Quirrell, and with uh, around the, the end, you kind of move slowly, uh, slower, uh, deeper into the cave, and uh, you can see that uh, the stream passage continue up beyond another set of uneven steps so you basically climb those uneven steps as you go up uh, and the stream is bending east as it goes and you can hear in the distance uh, the sounds of a waterfall uh, basically this you know probably the source of this uh, stream and you can see this bridge that spans the passage um, uh, above you and it connects two tunnels um, the tunnels are something like 20 feet above your head um, and at this point, Rugath, you spot uh, another goblin hiding or trying to hide on the bridge. Uh, obviously, he's watching you, um, but uh, he, it's, you know, uh, huddled into this small ball uh, and he's watching you as you go. But it's it, other than that, it doesn't do anything. Um, what do you do? Um... And that was the goblin that you said I saw? Yeah. Or... No, a goblin. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. There's a goblin up there, guys. <laughs> what do you want to do? Where? On the bridge <laughs> that you could see. <laughs> do we see the goblin? Um, you can try to make a perception check with a disadvantage because you basically in this pitch black room or cave Okay, that would be perception. Twelve. Twelve. What goblin? You don't see any goblin. <laughs> ah, I for some don't mind me. I'm feeling stupid. Is there any way that I could I could stealth and climb up the wall to the bridge behind the goblin? Sure. Um, you can basically try to climb the wall. Uh, you can try to do it. I mean, you don't need a, uh, any check for that. You're strong enough and you can climb the wall. Uh, to do it mm -hmm. quietly, uh, yes, you can try. Uh, you have the advantage of the, the sound of water tumbling from the waterfall. So, uh, yeah, so make a stealth check and you can go With forward. With normal or advantage? No, no, normal. Um, so, okay. Quarrel and Rondo, you basically are left in the dark uh, while the dwarf tries to, uh, yeah 
climbed the, the bridge. Yeah, that's a two. So you climb the bridge and then as soon as you set hand on the on the rope uh, bridge, uh, a stone uh, you know crumbles beneath your feet and you kind of shake the, the bridge as you try to block yourself from falling. <laughs> And you uh, can hear the goblin curses uh, as, you know, he didn't spot you uh, up to this moment. And he shouts, intruders! Ah, crap. Um, um, yeah. Is there a... Where is he shouting? So just above your head. Okay. And, I and, would like... Yeah, Quirrell and Narando, you can hear uh, a dwarven curse, then a goblin curse, and then intruders! I, I just go. Uh, I'd like, I'd like to pick up a few, like, a couple stones. Yeah. Cast light onto all of them. Okay. Throw a couple into where he's yelling. Okay, this is actually a great <laughs> idea. Jump down and try to just give him something. Go. Oh my gosh, there's magic all around here. What's going on? Okay. Okay. <laughs> As we try to run by. Okay, so you try to run and um, move below the bridge. This is what you're you're telling me. Yes. Okay. Great. That's a lot of good idea. Great. So, um, as Quirrell and Rondo, you kind of lost in the dark, hearing those echoes and shouts, you suddenly see three uh, brightly lit uh, stones kind of fly into the cave, uh, land on the bridge, one of them on the bridge, which makes the goblin visible both to you, Quirrell and Rondo, and two of okay. the yeah, two of the other stones kind of land, one in water, one uh, you know, in the far end of the cave. So you got some dim light around you. Um, okay, I'm gonna shoot the goblin. Okay, so I need you all to roll initiative. Um, yes. My plan was to go up there and touch and light up his nose and then warhammer him in the face <laughs> just so you guys could see him and then whack him off the ca uh, bridge. Okay. That didn't work. <laughs> it kinda worked. Eh. So your initiative uh, rolls 13. 13 for. Oh, 18 for Quarrel. 13, 13. for Ruga. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Rondo, Tini? What, what was the initiative again? Uh, so it's far. a d20 plus your dexterity modifier, if you have one. Okay. It's basically a roll that determines, you know, who goes first, that's all. So what's your count? Ten. Ten. Okay. So, uh, Quirrell, you get to act first. Uh, you can hear some noise up uh, deeper from the cave. Uh, someone is shouting. You can hear metal tools suddenly at work. You're not sure what it is. Uh, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to shoot this goblin Go for that it. I can see. Yep. Do it. That'll be a 19. 19. Your arrow flies through the dock and smacks the goblin uh, in the chest. Uh, roll for damage. Do I get sneak attack damage? Because no. is he adjacent to a friend N of mine? Uh, no, not exactly. No. Okay. Yeah. Eight. Eight. So uh, it you know blurts out a curse and falls from the bridge with the arrow sticking from his uh, chest. But soon as its body lands on the stream you can see or you know you can see the passage that is suddenly filled with a mighty roar as a huge surge of rushing water pours down from above so somebody somewhere um, you know unblocked the the waterfall and this huge wave of water is uh, rushing toward you uh, I need you all to make uh, a dexterity saving throw to see if you can, you know, jump to the side and, and make yourself, um, you know, not not be swept with the stream. So uh, um, I'm on the bridge, so... Oh, yeah. So My you're fine. You're fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. So dexterity save, it's basically uh, uh, 1d20 plus your dexterity modifier. And if you're... Yeah, I think that that's it. Yeah. Unless you're proficient uh, with in dexterity, and then you can add your plus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Twenty. So, Twenty. 
So Quirrell, you roll out uh, of the waves passage and, and you manage to uh, cling into one of the caves wall and as the water pours over you and, and um, you know, and you just cling to the, to the wall and make yourself uh, steady. Um, Tini? Two. Two, okay, so. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, you can hear Rondo uh, crying ouch as uh, he's, you know, he loses grip and then tumbles down uh, down toward the entrance of the cave and while doing that um, mm -mm -mm -mm. okay I need you to make uh, only you Tini uh, a strength saving throw so you're basically trying after the, the wave took you trying to stabilize yourself to avoid getting hit um, from the rough stones uh, on the stream uh, bottom so that will be 1d20 plus uh, your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus that'll yeah. be plus five probably yeah. yes fighter right yeah So, uh, Tinny, did you manage the roll? Uh, eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, so the 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 wave is too strong for you, and the water uh, roll you and tumble you. Uh, so you hit yourself against the the stream floor, and you got some, you know, uh, you got bruised by the the stones that stick from the uh, the bottom of the cave. Uh, so you suffer five points of damage. Um, from this rough and tumbling uh, yeah and you, you basically lose sight of him you can only see him you know pops up his head uh, near the entrance of the cave um, and at this point you can see uh, two more goblins uh, rush to the bridge uh, with bows ready so <coughs> yeah Quarrel, Quarrel what do you do uh can I use my short bow? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Okay. You shake it from the, the the you know the water drops and you get it ready, no problem. Okay. Okay. I'm just thinking because I was holding on to. Stuff. Yeah. You That's you get why. up. You you collect yourself and you can do that. Okay. okay I'm gonna shoot. Uh, there are they? They're not next to uh, Rogath, are they? Uh, they are in a sense, but since he's not attacking, uh, I'm not sure that they even know that he's down there on the bridge. Um, so you can't use his help this turn. Okay. Okay. So, do they see me? Oh, yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, I, that was a natural one, but I'm gonna use my, uh... Halfling lucky yeah. roll because one sucks. Yeah, do that. And that'll be a 12 plus 5, 17. 17. So another arrow flies from your hand and sticks right into the hip of one of the goblins. Roll damage. Yes. That's a 9. 9. So with a curse, the goblin stumbles down the, the bridge and falls into the water. Uh, leaving only one goblin on the trail on the bridge. Uh, Rugath, what do you do? Um, you're on the bridge, hmm. kind of sticking. You're not sure that the goblin knows that you're there. Is he looking away from me? Yeah, he's he's pointing a bow at uh, Quarrel. Is there any way I could? I'd like to sneak up behind him and hit him with my warhammer in a way that could knock him off the bridge. So um, you can try and make a strength uh, check to basically, you know, f um, hurl yourself uh, up from the bridge and straight onto the bridge and then attack him. Um, do that. Right, it, make a strength check. It's a strength check and roll high. <laughs> uh, 18 plus 2 is 20. Oh my god. So that's great. You, you, you know, in <laughs> ab unbelievable feat of strength, you manage to pull yourself onto the bridge the surprised goblin just looks at you baffled as you swing your uh whatever so warhammer so swing warhammer. for attack yeah do that um so if when i'm attacking i add the attack bonus and do i add anything else yeah your strength bonus i think i think 
So it's your it's proficiency <laughs> bonus? Attack bonus, proficiency bonus, and strength bonus. No, no, no. The the attack bonus is your strength bonus bonus plus your proficiency modifier. Okay, 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 awesome. Um, that would be eighteen. Eighteen. So the the back of the hammer hits the goblin at uh, the shoulder level. He squeals, uh, and I need you to roll your damage. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. So that goblin, you can hear bones cracking. And that goblin flies uh, from the bridge as well. Um, both <laughs> exactly. Uh, and as you kind of you know victoriously lift your uh, warhammer, you can feel the the bridge suddenly wobbles up and down as if something really heavy uh, walked on it. And you look behind you, and you can see this huge, huge, huge goblin. Uh, you know, square shoulders, flat head. Uh, he's holding this enormous uh, um, uh, club made out of stone, and he looks at you and says, "What is this?" And he cries, "They came for the prisoners! Kill them!" And he rushes to you. Um, Arando, what do you do? You can see. That on the bridge, uh, Rugath is in trouble, and two more goblins are, you know, approaching from the um, the deeper side of the cave. What do you do, Tini? That's you. Hmm? Yeah, it's your turn, Tini. All right. What do you do? So, Tini, you basically see that the dwarf is on the bridge, uh, f about to fight this huge goblin. Uh, Quarrel is uh, further into the cave, just fired a shot that killed the goblin. What What do you want to do? Have I stabilized myself yet? I'm gonna fall. What? Sorry, I, di I didn't get that. Is my mic okay? Yeah. Now it is, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Sorry. Have to keep moving it around to the mic has to be pulled. All right. Yeah. So, have I stabilized myself from falling down and getting yeah. bruised? Yeah. 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 You're on on your feet, right. wet and bruised, but on your feet. All right. So, what do you want to do? Okay, so you want to rush forward and try to get to those goblins? Yes. Okay, so you'll need to basically uh, run your turn, okay? So you just run uh, to make yeah. yourself there. So at the next turn, you'll be able to uh, to go and, and, you know, attack them or something like that. So actually, 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 can I leave? Actually, how far away are they? So you you basically tumble down to the uh, to the opening to the cave opening, uh, so they are very far away and uh, you know obscured by shadow. Uh, so unless you have a bow that you want to switch and fire, then you can maybe make it. Uh, but I it, don't have a bow. I only have javelins. Uh, so can I, I get them in javelin range. Uh, so you can run half the the distance and then throw the javelin. Yes. Yeah. So, That's what I'd like to do. Okay, so you run up the stream, splashing water everywhere and preparing that javelin. And as you get in rage, you just let it fly. Um, All right. It says here that it's I can throw it either up to 30 feet or up to 120 feet with disadvantage on the attack roll. So how yeah. far away are they? Um, so that will probably be... Uh, let me see. Hmm. Um, no, you can use it uh, at the 30 feet range, no problem. All right. Yeah. So, 1d6. You, f you first need to hit, right? So you need to roll 1d20. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's your dexterity modifier this time. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and your proficiency bonus again, so. Oh, it's a plus one. Oh. Uh, 
Six. So the javelin flies from your hand and, uh, you know, due to the shadow and you're still uh, confused because of the uh, falling down the stream, uh, you miss. It flies, hits one of the walls and sends some stones tumbling down. Um, at, at this point, the goblins, uh, the two that just arrived, release uh, two arrows uh, aimed at um, you and Coral. So I need your uh, AC. Your armor classes. 17. 14. Okay. 18. No, no, you're you're on the bridge. You'll you'll be in trouble in a minute. Not now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, crawl. Another uh, arrow uh, manages to hit you. Um, you kind of try to uh, to shake it, but you then hit yourself against the wall, and it cuts you uh, around the shoulder height, uh, and you are taking two points of damage from that arrow. Um, Lando, you are hit by uh, yet another arrow that sticks now from your thigh uh, and it hits you for two damage. Uh, and the goblins kind of, ooh, they, they shout triumphantly. Uh, the huge uh, goblin approaches you, uh, uh, Rugath, and says, one dwarf coming down. And he tries to grab you and throw you off the bridge. And I need you to make a strength check. Uh, if you're proficient with uh, athletics or something like that, then add. I need to make a strength check. Yeah. Alright. So he basically um, tries to grab you and throw you out of the bridge. Thirteen. <clears throat> Thirteen. So he tries to push you, uh, and you find yourself, you know, on the back of with, with your back stuck on the uh, rope. Um, uh, you know the, the the rope that makes the the bridge, and you manage to resist his push. He looks surprised, as he as if he you know he didn't expect you to be that strong. Uh, so you two kind of grapple uh, on the bridge, and the bridge kind of wobbles up and down. Um, Quarrel, your turn. Okay, so now he is attacking. Yes. Cool. Cool. I'm gonna Shoot go up. strong guy. Yes. Strong goblin. Come on, Have we one. determined whether or not this guy's if this is Clark or just another big henchman? You you assume it is Clark, the chieftain. I don't okay. assume. <coughs> he can, he gonna he gonna bash our heads. <laughs> don't bash you no, on the head. I'm gonna kill kill him. That's a nineteen. A nineteen hits wow. and it's actually a sneak attack, right? Okay, so an arrow flies and sticks uh, into this huge goblin uh, backside. What's How does sneak attack work? So he basically uh, rolls another die, uh, another damage die, uh, d6. So a critical? It's not a critical, it's another d6 uh, right now at this level. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nine. Nine overall, okay. Yeah. Um, so the goblin shrieks. Uh, in pain and he shouts at the other uh, two goblins, his minions kill that little halfling the bastard he stings the finger. Yeah, he stings oh he stings um, okay Rugaf, what do you do um since he's grappling with me and I'm within melee range yes. I'd like to use inflict wounds okay this is actually... So I need to roll 3d10. Oh my god. Um, wait. What? Yeah. I thought that was a little bit... <laughs> 3d10? I'm not familiar with that amount of damage. It is. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's what it says. Oh my <laughs> god. Okay, then go for it. I know, right? Level 1, I'm like, holy crap. Uh, where's... Seriously? D10? Okay. This is a surprise. Yeah, I, I, I have it right here. No, I believe you. Oh. I believe you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's six spell now. I, I saw. Oh, it. it is. Wow, I just bought the thing a minute ago. It says uh, first level necromancy. Yeah, it's a six spell. I saw who uh, I saw ro a critical roll. They used it once. Yeah, well, they made later. You, did they use it at a, a higher level? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They, they, every single time it's at a higher level, it's a it's by it's a, it goes up one d ten. Oh, right. I rolled a 15. Inflict wounds, first level. 
Tilt it, tilt it, tilt it. Oh my god! I know, <laughs> it's insane! Okay, it changed cool. it a little bit. Yeah, but do it. Yeah, I am uh, rolled, I am uh, 15 damage. 15, so you can see um, the, the huge goblin's face, they kind of wither, right? The, the, the muscle kind of shrivels and his eyes pop out and his hair uh, is now gray and he shouts in, in real pain. And then he tries to choke you out of your life, but that will be in, on his turn. Well, that, that was amazing. Um, okay. Erando, what do you want to do? Uh, Tinny. Hmm. Getting a bit low on health, but I think I'll try to attack one of the two goblins. <coughs> oh. Javelin, or oh, do yeah. you try to actually uh, reach when I up? When I run up? When I run up to them? Yeah, you can do that. You, you basically run up and climb the, the you know, the, this, uh, the wall to reach them. So that's not a problem because the walls are very rough, so you can... You can do that on your movement. So it's one d twenty to hit, right? Uh, one d twenty plus five if you're d using your battle axe. All right. Nine. Nine. Okay. So both of the goblins they manage to duck away from your mighty cleave. The the bridge kind of wobbles because of your your swing, uh, but that's it. Um. So the two goblins, they uh, turn one at Quarrel and one at you. They're still firing their arrows. Um, so the arrow that heads it toward um, Quarrel hits again for another two damage. Um, and the uh. arrow that heads toward Arando uh, misses. You, you hear it hitting the wall above you. Um, and then some rocks tumble down, but that's it. Uh, How much health do you have, Arando? Uh, I think five. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah, the... I'm at four. Okay. Uh, and the, the, this huge goblin, um... Yeah, okay, he, he's basically, he, he's taking a step back and then just trying to bash you with his huge club, uh, Rugath. What is your AC? Eighteen. Eighteen. So you managed to duck. Uh, and you can actually hear the whoosh of this huge club. It's it's you know ridged, and it has a lot of uh, sharp edges. So you kind of see the horror coming, but you manage to duck, and only the wind. Um, I'll get you, dwarf, for what you did to me. Um, <laughs> uh, quarrel. You're up. <coughs> okay. You have it. I'm gonna hit one of the, the <laughs> bastard that hit me twice. <laughs> okay, and since uh, since a rondo there, you can you can try to sneak again. Okay. Well, yeah, I gotta hit. No, ten. Ten. So uh, another arrow flies, <laughs> and then falls um, down to the cave. Um, Rugath. No, oh, not again. Not again. <sighs> Let's try it again. Are oh, you back? Right. Back? Yep. Um. We're back. Okay. I like to cast Sacred Flame. Yep. On the um, uh, big guy. The big guy. Okay, do that. All right. One d eight. Oh uh, no, I need to make a, a, a saving throw first. <laughs> I rolled a yeah. one. A one? It's a, yeah, one damage. Okay. Okay, um, and he actually makes it. So uh, he dodges out of the, of the flaming um, uh, column, but the bridge catches fire. So you're both on the bridge and flames kind of lick the ropes and lick the woods, uh, the wooden planks that uh, make the, the bridge. So you're kind of... Um, you know, covered by fire. So in in a round That's or two, good. it will yeah, <clears throat> not not very um, good. I'd like to use my bonus action to use healing word. Okay. On a uh, coral. You do that. Uh, D four plus. Hang on. <sighs> so you can hear the the dwarf shouting words of uh, prayer. Uh, they are uh, kind of bounce 
back and forth in the cave. Uh, you, uh, you heal for five points. Uh, cool. And I'm healed. Yes. <laughs> Should be happy. I rolled a one. It's <laughs> discipline of life and spell casting ability are the only things that brought it back up. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at nine now, so I'm good. Okay. Uh, Rondo, Tini, this is your turn. What do you do? You're kind of standing between two goblins and the bridge is behind you catching fire. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I'd like to get a little bit of distance between me and this bridge. Okay. Caught up in the flames. Uh, I'd like to throw a javelin at one of these little goblins. Okay, so they're basically in melee range. So, oh, okay, unless you want. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. X time. Okay. So you take a few steps back and you're on solid ground. And then you swing with your axe. Plus strength, right? Yeah. Yeah. Strength and your proficiency bonuses. So it's one plus d five. Yeah, 1d20 plus 5. Alright, 18. 18. So you manage to slash one of the goblins and he shrieks. Um, I need you to make your uh, damage roll. 1d12 plus 3, I think. Yeah. Uh, it says 1d12 plus 3 slashing damage. Yes, so roll that and let us know. one ouch natural one four so you manage to wound one of the goblins um, it shrieks in pain uh, takes a step back and then it tries to maneuver uh, to hit you this time um, how many goblins are there two and the big one okay this okay yeah so now the the burning rope uh, and the burning bridge kind of um, as uh, Rugath and the, the huge uh, goblin are fighting, you kind of you know hit the flames here and there. So you two take uh, two damage uh, from the flames. Um, Does that mean me too? Yeah, you Rugath and the, the goblin that fights you. He catches fire on his fur, and you're catching fire on your you know your hairy dwarven uh, body. Okay. Um, yeah. Goblins now. So one of the goblins uh, tried to attack Rondo uh, and misses. The, the uh, swing goes high above your head uh, as you duck Rondo and uh, avoid getting hit. The other one uh, tries at Quarrel again and gets a natural one. So basically the, the arrow kind of <laughs> flies from his hand as he tries to manipulate his bow. Uh, Finally, sharpshooter dies. Yeah, and uh, the big uh, goblin uh, again tries at Rugath, swinging the mighty club. What's your AC again? 18. And this time it's a hit. Uh, oh no. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, let me see the... the this is gonna hurt. It's oh not, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be ugly. Um... Oh my god, so you have one, whoops, so you take seven damage from that mighty blow. Ow. You can see teeth flying um, from the dwarves uh, mouth. Are you down? Nope, Not yet. still up. Still up, okay. Uh, so, right. so yeah, the goblins kind of <clears throat> cringe as they hear this, you know, the, the smack. Uh, ooh. Cloud is bashing head again. Um, and that's Quarrel turn. Okay, how does the dwarf look? How do you look, Dan? Shoot him! <laughs> okay. Shoot. <laughs> I'll shoot him then. Okay, do that. And you have your sneak again, so. Yeah, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, uh, another arrow flies uh, above your heads, um, Rugoth and uh, the goblin, and he, he looks at you and says, Oh, your little stingy friend won't help you. I will crush your head with my club. Bashing time! I flip him again. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Rugoth, yeah. Okay. This is what I'd like to do. I would like 
is there any way that I could push him yes. onto the bridge so yes. that he's more covered? Then I'd like to double back and throw a hand axe. Oh, that's that's too much. You can try and push him, you know, off the bridge. Uh, the same way he did for you um, or you could just disengage you can just move back um, and you know avoid getting hit by just concentrating on uh, on not getting hit as you uh, you know try to go off the bridge whatever you want to do but he's he, he looks to be you know the, the this big goblin also looks pretty much wounded he's burned you, you cast yeah. your, your <clears throat> spell on him I'd like to try to run away my full distance of 25 feet. Okay. If there's any cover, I'd like to duck behind it, and I'd like to throw my hand axe. So if you'll do that, he'll manage to, you know, sneak in an opportunity attack, and you might not ah, want to do that. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna use my. I'll use my warhammer. Okay, so you go all in, no problem. Do yep. that. Do that. Twenty-one. Oh my god! Oh my, no, 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 uh, 23. Okay. No, it doesn't hit. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> if it was a dragon, it wouldn't hit. Yeah, so your Warhammer... Actually, it would. Oh yeah, you're right, yeah. 21 AC. Yeah. It, it smacks right into him, and you can roll your damage. Alright. Oh my god, what's up with me in rolling today? <laughs> uh, three. Three, okay. Uh, so you can hear his, uh, you know, he's doing something like an oof. Oh, is that the best you can do? I'll squash you for that. Um, and it's Arando's turn. Tini, right. what do you do? Just yeah. Flame is a bonus action, right? I have one. I have a javelin on the left, right? Yep. Do it. <laughs> All right. I'll throw my last javelin at him. At the big guy? Tini, at. It's at, at right? Yeah, at the big guy, you're you're aiming yeah. at... Okay, do that. 13. 13. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Let me see. Nope. Uh, so it's hide, ah! it's hide armor kind of blocks it, and he pulls it out and throws it to the, um, to the water. Is that all you got, you weaklings? I'll feast on your flesh tonight. Um... Okay, goblins. Uh, one fires an arrow at uh, Quarrel again and misses again. Uh, another Quirrell arrow you clutch. duck. Yes. Uh, the other one lunges with a sword at you, Rondo. Oh, this time it hits uh, for uh, three damage. So it cuts you uh, on your foot um, as you are standing just between the two of them. Are you still up? Um, did I take damage from the fire that one time? Nope, you you got off the 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 rope um, bridge, so All no. All right, then I'm at two health. Two health, okay. <sighs> you and me both, man. <laughs> okay, uh, and the big one again tries to bash the dwarf on the head. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen, so, oh, hmm, wait, that's on the... Might be tight. Uh, again, again, again. It's plus four. Oh, you managed to duck. Uh, you hear <laughs> again the, the club just whooshing uh, near your face, but you managed to duck that. Oh, stand still so I can bash you in the head. Oops. That's not okay how close that was. <laughs> okay. Quarrel, what do you do? I shoot him again. Uh, okay, do that. Nope. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang it. <laughs> yeah, so you can see the, the frustration on the halfling as he's sweating in the cave, shooting arrow after arrow, and no, oh, no, damn it. Um, okay, anything else you want to do? Uh, actually, uh, I, I can't hide as a bonus action yet, so there's not much I can do there. Okay. I uh, well, I could move a bit closer. Okay, so you kind of edge yourself uh, closer to the to the bridge. Rugath, what do you do? Warhammer again. <laughs> okay. That's all I can do. Um, nah, it's an eight. Ah, eight? No. So you basically 
try to hit him and you stumble so he just you know grabs your um war hammer and push you weakling uh irando can i yeah i'm listening mm, that's probably not an action but is there any way i could try to rip the morning star out of his hand um you can probably try and you know hit him in the hand or something like that just to to f get the the weapon flying from his hand uh you can try to do that next turn if you okay. want okay um rando tini what do you do well i'm straight out of javelins so i'll guess i'll have to attack one of the goblins nearby okay <clears throat> Um, oh, and I, I forgot I forgot the fire damage for um, Rugath and the Goblin. For, oh, no. Okay, so that's two damage for the both of you. Zero. Okay, so Rugath falls uh, as the flame licks his flesh and he you know, releases this shout and <laughs> drops on the, on the bridge. Uh, the big Goblin also looks kind of burned and, and weakened, but he turns around triumphantly I said I will feast on your flesh uh, Irando, what do you do? <laughs> well, I don't have any javelins left You have can a try to go for a YOLO dive <laughs> uh, Well, I already rolled to attack the nearby one with my axe so yeah. I'm gonna have to go with that No problem, how did you do with that roll? Nine. Nine. So not very well. Not very well, no. We're rolling for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I, got that I got that nat 20 in the beginning, and now we're I'm just getting crap rolls. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. Um, I hear you. Okay. Uh, so Erondo, uh tries to hit one of the goblins, but they just basically dance around you, uh, and you, you, uh, uh, you don't hit either of them. So the huge guy, uh, he, he tries to get off the bridge uh, as he walks toward uh, his other goblin minions and they basically surround the rondo. So um, one of them again goes, uh, fires an arrow at a quarrel which hits this time for four damage. Um, mm. The other one tries uh, with his sword against the rondo which misses and the huge guy tries again at the rondo. I need your AC rondo, just remind me. Oh, uh, never 17? mind. Yeah, never mind. He he missed it. So you basically oh, take a step goodness. back. Yeah, and you you see the the club kind of getting close to you and goes past you. Um, Quarrel, what do you do? Um, and I need Rugath to make a death saving throw. You basically roll d twenty. Mm -hmm. It's over ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should be over ten. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, okay. So you get one success. Great. Um, that you mean now. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shoot at the big guy. Okay. Purple die. Yeah, you still have... Yes! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's not a 20, but it's uh 23. Total. Okay, yeah. And you do your sneak damage this time. That'll be 5 plus... Okay, eight. okay, so uh, an arrow sticks, another one just whooshes and th uh, buried itself deep uh, inside this creature's ribs. And he kind of opens his, his mouth to say something, but just a gush of blood comes out and he falls over and drops um, and, and dies. And his two minions, they look at him, they look at you. Uh, and they drop their bows and uh, we, we surrender uh, no harm to us we just can I say something yes you can I killed your leader so now I am your leader <laughs> and they they go uh, yes uh, that's that's the way it goes right yes we everything is that good. is the way it goes okay um and at this point, you can uh, stabilize your dying dwarf. Whoops. If you want to. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So Rugath, you w yeah you wake up um, as Quarrel and Rando kind of pour some water on your face. So I'm at one hit point now. Yes. So I, I need to have a long rest to be useful again because I don't have any spells. <laughs> Me too. And uh, the the two goblins, uh, they say, 
Um, we, we didn't hurt. Uh, we, we didn't hurt the prisoner. He is still here. If you want him, you can take him. Bring me the prisoner. And they, <coughs> you know, they they run and go back after you know a minute, carrying this uh, um, elderly human, and you identify Sildar, the the uh, companion of your dwarven employer. Uh, and he, he kind of, you can see that he's exhausted and wounded, uh, but he's very happy to see you. Um, and he just, you know, drives the goblin away as they try to help him walk. Uh, and he walk up to you and uh, reaches out his hand and says, I thank you. Uh, you don't know how much I owe you. You just saved my life. Oh, and we he, know. And he watches the, the dead, uh, the dead, uh, the huge goblin on the floor uh, and says, I wasn't even sure that's possible. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Wait, I'm too tired to talk. <laughs> Just over there, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he says, I think we should uh, head out of the cave because I don't know if any other goblins are going to return to it. They. Oh, don't worry, they're mine now. Oh no, I'm talking about the the, the other goblins. Uh, these are just scouts and and raiders. They have this whole tribe hidden somewhere, uh, where they took the 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 dwarf, Gundern. They grabbed him and and took him to this castle. They call it Cragmau Castle. What? Yeah, oh, they, great. yeah, they, they. I heard them talking about someone named the Black Spider paying them to get them the dwarf and his map. Oh yeah, the Black Spider. Yeah. But I, I don't. About him. I don't know who he is or what he is, but. I don't know, something fishy is going on. They they just ambushed us. They okay. knew we were coming. Hmm. Yeah, I got that one. So I turn to the goblin and say, So, who is this black spider? Uh, we, we don't know. They just pay... Uh, he just pays King Klug. Um That's not fair. You don't get paid? Uh, we we just walk for Chieftain Clark, the the black spider. He paid uh, King Grul. Yes, King Grul. He rules the castle. We 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 just here, you know, walk as uh, simple simple minions. Yes, we're not important. We don't know anything. He just told us to keep this this man alive and maybe sell him to be uh, working to do work. You know, work for money. Are he lucky he can work? Uh, they they will pay for him. Yes, they pay. They are paying for little girls, little boys. Uh, anything goes. Okay. <sighs> and at that point, Silder says, uh, I, "I really think we should head out and find some place to rest." Yeah, we should actually get the stuff too, and the horses. Quite okay. a fine yeah. idea. As you can see, two of us are in very bad condition. Yes, indeed. I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm good. You wouldn't happen to have any medical kits items on your person, would you? Uh, doesn't look like it. I mean, I possibly could make something from some clothes and rope, but. Yeah, so you can basically, oh, yeah, band bandage yourself, yeah, and that's about it. yeah, getting wounds cleaned. But a good night's sleep uh, should bring you uh, back. Logic, sleep fixes yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. God yeah. well, Rogoth, we couldn't have won this battle without you, and your inflict wounds. <laughs> Thank you. Although thinking back on it, I should have used it again. <laughs> And, uh, I loot the corpse. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Just do and, that. And uh, Silda says, uh, "When we'll get to Fandalin, I promise you, they will hear about your bravery." Yeah, 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 yeah. Then looting. 
yeah okay guys um so uh this is it this is it uh you saved the day you managed to rescue sildar uh and you've learned about this plot uh black spider who is after an ancient map um and yes um, and not die and not die you manage not to die it was close but you managed not to die so that was good. very close yeah kudos to you Woo! That was fun. I blame it on the die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, I rolled relatively low on the flicked wounds, too. Yeah. Which is really sad. Although I should have I, I th done it again. Instead of I healing. kept rolling five, six, five, six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My attack damages were like one several times. <laughs> oh, yeah, damage I wasn't that bad. I just couldn't hit anything. Yeah, yeah my, my damage yeah. was terrible. Yeah, that that inflict uh, was wounds was right, right. That inflict Alone. wounds was was in place. That that came. Yeah. That was good. That was good. That was good. Yes. Okay, guys. Um. So yeah, basically this is it. Uh, Tini, if that was your first session, then I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, uh, do uh, thank you for holding this and sure. having patience with me. <laughs> uh, do continue to your second and third and a, lif a lifetime of D and D. Yes. Uh, yeah. I probably will. No, okay. I definitely will. Thank yeah, this you. is this is very helpful. Actually, I'm, uh, on my D and D session last night, they managed to kill Clark, Jess yeah. last night. So yeah, get the exact other dynamic of being able to play it was very helpful. Okay, so. great. I'm I'm so. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, guys. So let's keep in touch, um, yeah. and I'll I'll meet you uh, someplace somewhere. Obviously. Awesome. All right. Okay, yeah. have have a great night and keep rolling those twenties. You too, man. <laughs> you too. Thanks. You too. Anyway, have fun. Thank you. Thank you very much.